The Scottish Government's initiative, Good Places, Better Health, has spent three years gathering and testing evidence from a wide range of experts in the fields of health, environment and design. Around the question, what is needed to deliver places that nurture good health for children? Ten recommendations have been made to transform the places that have the greatest impact on a child's health. Ten equally weighted practical ideals that all professions, groups and individuals involved in placemaking, health, children's services and community work can use to bring about healthier places for the children of Scotland to grow up in. The recommendations focus in on three themes of most relevance to children and their health. Neighbourhoods, homes and transport. We wish to see a Scotland. Where a Scottish neighbourhood quality standard is used as a standard for neighbourhood asset development. So what we're talking about here is a good idea to set out for planners and developers, house builders and councils, the key aspects of trying to create the healthiest places and the healthiest neighbours we can. So we set out the kind of gold standard, if you like. And in doing so, what we hope to do is to give uh, planners ideas for the kinds of things they should be aspiring to, and local authorities information by which they can assess those planning applications and planning developments. So it's a bit like saying, here's a gold standard for the healthiest neighbourhoods that we can create in Scotland. Uh, and if we set that out uh, and we put policies in place to help people adhere to that, um, we hope that we can make healthier neighbourhoods. A Scotland where neighbourhoods are safe, appealing, support a healthy diet and have outdoor spaces that are well used, valued and respected. We want safe local environments, safe neighbourhoods, because that encourages people to get out more, to use their environment more. There's also a chance actually for communities to have a chance to grow things, to learn about the food chain and healthy eating that way. That's really great for children. Um, we know that lower levels of obesity seem to be associated with better green space and access to it. And obviously we need to have uh, good access to other kinds of food in our neighbourhoods that are uh, healthy, healthy choices. where public spaces are well maintained and managed. Children at play are acting out all sorts of alternative realities. They're learning how to interact with each other, they're learning how to get on with each other, they're learning about boundaries to their behaviour. The sense of being breathless, I was recently speaking to some uh, physical activity um, academics who were running a programme in school about fitness and they found that some of the children had never actually been breathless before. We were talking about teenagers here, they didn't know what it was like to be breathless. And that's extraordinary. So the external environment, making it safe but exciting for children to play in, is a very important way of encouraging children's development, both physically and psychologically. And therefore we need to be far more um, adventurous and innovative in developing those opportunities. With neighbourhoods which support and encourage access to the natural world. Access to the natural world seems to be particularly important for children in their development. It gives them a sense of uh, the wider world beyond what they're used to inside the home. It gives them a chance to be physically active. People are more active, including children, when they're outdoors than when they're indoors. It allows them to explore, to use manipulable parts, things that you can be played with in the natural environment that are different from fixed uh, playground kind of facilities. And what's really interesting is that this natural environment seems to provide children with something that helps their mental health as well as their physical health. So it really offers a rich physical, sociological and mental benefit for children and that stays with them as a virtuous cycle into adulthood. 
where there is a sense of community. And children are welcomed. We seem to have built a society in Scotland where children aren't welcome. And the, the evidence of that is the pro proliferation of no ball game signs all around the place, even um, in, in play parks, which just seems daft. We felt that it was important that, that communities and, and that Scotland as a whole embraced children back again and accepted that they were actually a really important part of our society and one a part that should be welcomed rather than kept away and kept aside. A Scotland where communities have a mix of housing types, sizes and tenures. So one of the things we know about how to keep a community healthy is that we need to keep the population of the community there. We don't want people moving out when things start to get tough. We also know that across the life course, um, when people become adults and they move out of home, for example, and they go on to have families, and then their families grow, and then they age and retire, they have different housing needs. So if we want them to try to stay in the same neighbourhoods, we've got to provide housing that's suitable for all life stages. And the housing that um, somebody who's just starting out as an adult um, needs is different to the housing that somebody who's got a growing family needs and different again to maybe somebody who's in old age and who has mobility problems. So different housing needs means if we want to keep people in the same neighbourhoods and we want to keep communities together, we need to provide housing that's flexible and that meets the needs of people across their life course. where everyone lives in a warm dry, appropriately ventilated home and where fuel poverty is eliminated. A warm dry house, well first of all you won't have dampened mould and dampened mould are one set of causes of asthma. In a warm dry house you've got more room to move around, you've got room to play. On the other hand, depending on how the heating is introduced, you may have a lot more radiators, young ones may be out of sight more, you may have to pay attention to some other things. So it's not always a question of win-win, sometimes it's a question of gains, but you need to watch out for some of the unexpected consequences also. Where homes are flexible and they're used as space and offer opportunities for positive interaction for families and neighbours and protect against noise, nuisance and injuries. I think that um, what's really useful around documents like Good Places Better Health is that they, they force us to start thinking about the difference between a house as a box with walls and roofs and windows and a home, which isn't the same thing. Because the home is where you are and your relationships with the rooms within those walls, with the spaces outside of those walls and with all the people that come together to make your life safe and interesting and challenging to be you. But therein is a key problem. How do you make a decision about a fixed thing, like a street, like a house, like a neighborhood, and at the same time, allow it to change without all the tension, you know, all the problems and, and whatnot. And one of the ways is to start being extremely clear about what is the most important thing to keep fixed. If the most important thing to keep fixed is the experience of being safe, fix that. A Scotland with street systems enable children to make positive, safe travel choices and support their needs. This was about ensuring that we build our neighbourhoods and communities so that children can walk and cycle and have places to go if they're walking and cycling. We know that, particularly as an adult, and, and many behaviours are set in childhood, if you've got somewhere in your neighbourhood that you can walk or cycle to, then you're more likely to do it and to incorporate that into their normal living. Urban areas are safe for pedestrians and cyclists and their needs are prioritised over the needs of the driver. One of the evidenced facts that we have, which we don't need statistics for, is that we walk slowly. That's what we do. So environments that are able to allow us to do that are environments that are probably the environments where it's greater chance for us to meet, talk, see, do, 
shop, transact, these kind of things. Who's decided what can be housed on that street? What are the values we use about how the buildings work, about how we present things, about how we use things? So it's not just about the speed, because that's one thing. But once you've got it all slowed down, the question is, OK, in this kind of nice slowed down world, what's here? If the answer is not much, you know, two concrete walls that go on for a mile, that's not much. Why would you want to be in that street? The Good Places Better Health Evaluation Group would urge all those involved in creating and maintaining communities to work together to implement these recommendations and to view places and placemaking through the lens of children's health and well-being. <laughs>